Oh, it's you guys. This area is technically off limits. We have some very toxic and dangerous specimen here. Wait, what? Origins? Out already? F okay, let me get a fresh new lab coat and I'll show you some of the demonic monsters we've been breeding in the dark laboratory. Welcome back to the dark laboratory. Oh, sorry for that. I don't know why that happens every time I bring you guys here. I know the last time you guys came here, we had some amazing prototypes to show you. Namely, some of our beast, aquas, and bug axes. Definitely come check out our earlier video if you haven't seen it yet. The link will be in the description. I'll wait for you guys. You guys done yet? You guys back? All right. So recently, our spies were able to infiltrate Mavis headquarters and gather some materials and samples from the Sky Mavis teams themselves. We oddly had a lot more eyeballs and ear parts in our last shipment, as well as an additional $600 million. Just joking, just kidding, guys. So these builds are looking a lot more complete now. Now that the eye and ear parts are important for Axie Origin, it's vital that you guys are factoring in which eye and ear parts you guys want for your specific builds. All six cards must synergize with each other and with all the other cards in your deck from all the other axes. We'll be covering these two sections of the laboratory in today's tour. The biohazardous area and the bulletproof aquarium. So I want to bring you guys to the first area of the tour, the biohazardous zone. Here you'll find some very poisonous axes. These guys leave deadly toxins everywhere, and some of them are even radioactive. I highly suggest not touching any of these plants or reptiles as they will lead to a slow and painful death. <laughs> you poison fanatics are gonna love how poison works in V3. The target loses three HP per stack at the start of its turn. Stacks are reduced by one, and the cap is 30 stacks. That's going to be pretty sweet. So let's take a look at our first poison axie. Yes, you guys may know it from V2. He's back, new and improved, the Yam Plant Tank. The main focus of this build, as you could probably tell by the name, would be the Yam card itself. Let's take a look at the card details. It costs one energy and deals 15 damage to all enemies. In fact, its effect reads, attack and apply two stacks of poison to everyone. That's insane. Other cards that would synergize amazingly with this and the plant body type would be Green Thorns and Rosa. These cards are fantastic because they also apply poison to the enemy axes. Green Thorns will apply two poison stacks six times to random targets and heal your own axie for 20 HP. That's 12 stacks of poison total, which will deal 36 damage on the first turn itself. That's toxic as fuck. Well, Rosa is an innate card, meaning it will be guaranteed to be in your hand during your first turn. It also allows you to apply two stacks of poison and apply sleep to a random Axie for two turns. It will also be banished upon use allowing you to thin your deck out, which is a very nice bonus. This means round one, an enemy will be disabled and poisoned, which is really good for stalling the game. It's toxic. That's good. The other three cards that will be great additions to this build will be Blossom, Beach, and Silence Whisper. As you can probably tell, this plant was very deadly, but lacked the ability to sustain and keep itself alive, which is why we having Beach and Silence Whisper is very important. Beach is just a big two cost juggernaut card that deals 90 damage and provides 65 shield. I'm the juggernaut, bitch! Silence Whisper is also a really good overall heal card that provides 65 HP to any ally on the field, including yourself, which will be necessary to sustain your team in case of any backdoor or face rush team that this Yam tank may face. Blossom is the last card in the build, and we thought this would be the best eye card overall as it's a zero cost card that puts one plant card from your draw pile into your hand. This can be very useful as it can provide you the right cards you need in a given situation, whether that's poison, a heal, or shielding. This build would put our plant axie at five plant parts and one reptile part. <laughs> 
Some of the amazing runes we would recommend with this Axie would be Healing Pulse to increase the tankiness of the team and any charms to increase the HP of this beautiful but deadly plant. Now this build would pair very well with other poison axes such as the Yam Tank or the Toxzilla. This Salamander is an absolute nightmare. He will poison you until you cannot move and beat you so hard you'll be crying Poppy Jihos. It's over 9,000! The main focus of this build will surround Gila, which is a 2 cost, 40 damage card that reads attack all enemies. Deal 2 bonus damage per poison stack on enemy. This would be absolutely filthy if you achieve max stacks, which is a just 30 stacks total, by the way. That would be a whopping 60 extra damage. No, that's a lot of damage. That puts this card at 100 damage for all enemies. This would definitely be more of a late game axi that you would want to have in your team. The other cards that would complement this build nicely would be green thorns and small frills. You guys already know what Green Thorns does, so I won't go into great detail again, but Small Frail is a 1 cost card that applies 3 stacks of poison on all enemies, and it also heals the Axie for 30 HP. This is great for adding further stacks of poison on the enemy, and it even heals you to provide you some tankiness. It's absolutely perfect for stalling. <laughs> the other cards that would be great to combo with this Axie is Antenna, Razor Bite, and Tricky. Antenna is just great overall for going through your deck faster. It lets you scry the top four cards of your deck. Scry means you can look at the top cards of your draw pile and you may discard any of them. So this means you can look at the top four cards, discard the one you don't want, and then put them back on the draw pile. So now you know what you're going to draw. This is great for cycling through your deck and setting up your poison combos. It also gets banished from your deck, which is helpful as well because you will have tricky on this Axie. Tricky is such a playful card due to its effect. If initial, swap this card with one selected card in your banish pile, which means you can also use this card to bring one of your banished cards back, such as Antenna, and then go through the whole process one more time. Another one. Razor Bite is another great card to have on this Axie as the mouth card, as you'll also be able to do a bit of damage other than the poison and gila damage. You'll also provide some further healing capabilities to this bad boy to beef him up further. These guys will be one hell of a bruiser to fight with. And let me tell you, I've gotten into my fair share of incident battling with him. The Toxzilla has got a thousand kilos of punching power. He stands at 500 pounds alone. He makes great use of runes and charms as well since he's a reptile with 5 reptile parts and 1 bug part. I really recommend using some of the runes naturally catered towards poison users such as Poison Touch or Venom Master as these will seriously help get those poison stacks higher and higher. Now that's the end of the biohazardous section of the tour. We can finally take out our gas masks and make our way to the bulletproof aquarium. So I know it's a bit wet over here due to some of the leaks and I know this aquarium looks massive, but trust me, these glass panels are very durable and bulletproof. If you take a deeper look here, you will notice that we have some mutated aqua axes that are capable of hitting multiple axes at once. We call these guys the Gatling Shrimp. Courtesy of Abu, by the way, from MTTM. We actually had to make take some of his DNA to what? make these monstrosities. Yeah. These guys have the punching capabilities of the Mantis Shrimp with a dynamic speed of a dragonfly. Be careful! These Aquas will take out both your front line and your back line if you even blink for a second. This Aqua is built around one of the new keywords found in Axie Origin, Damage Boost, which has the following effect, by the way. The target has attack damage increased by one per damage boost stack. And it was told by Shade that damage boosts and healing boosts will stack forever throughout the entire game. This means that all your attacks will continuously deal more and more damage as you stack more and more damage boosts on your Aqua. That's why our Gatling Shrimps have Tiny Fan and Clam Shell, which will provide many damage boosts. Tiny Fan is a zero cost card that allows you to gain three stacks of damage boosts while gaining an additional energy. Clam Shell provides four stacks of damage boosts if the attack results in HP loss for the enemy which shouldn't be too difficult. These cards will be essential to ramp up all the damage. It will also be very important to have Telescope in the eyes to help out with a bit of the card searching and if you need a specific card in a given circumstance. 
Due to the way damage boosts work, multi-hit attacks will benefit tremendously. I do recall hearing that AoE attacks will not benefit from this bonus, so that's why we have selected some of the following cards instead. We have Shrimp, Perch, and Kotaro. So Perch was selected for obvious reasons. It's an incredibly powerful, two-cost, multi-hit card that's also in Aqua Park, which works fantastically to synergize with the Aqua's damage boost function. Each of the Perch's four hits would gain that bonus damage. That's a 4x on this card's overall damage with each damage boost. So Kotaro was selected as well, as it's also a multi-hit card, which as explained, pairs very well with damage boost cards. It also provides additional value in the early and mid game by gaining you two hits for free. If this card hits two random enemies, it will gain you one energy. Now lastly, we have the Shrimp as the tail card to help out with any pesky backliners and it would combo really well with Perch since Perch has the following effect. Prioritize target with lowest HP. This means if that if you had a backliner you wish to take out immediately, you could shrimp them to deal a good amount of damage and then play Perch to finish him off, which is why we dubbed this guy the Gatling Shrimp. As you can probably tell, this Aqua has great synergy being an Aqua with 5 Aqua parts and 1 Reptile part. We thought the best way to maximize the capabilities of this Aqua would be by upgrading its ability to survive and increasing its ability to increase damage boost stacks quicker, which is why we recommend the Heart of the Ocean Rune and the pre-order charm on the Tiny Fan and Clamshell. So now that you've seen what's in the water of the aquarium, just wait till you've seen what's flying above on those little islands. Oh shit, goddamn shinobi birds. I can't even see them until it's too late. Mystic, fix the glass, please. So where was I? Oh yeah, that's right. Shinobi birds or assassin birds, up to you really. These invisible bastards though, are worse than the eagles you see in Elden Ring. They deal as much damage as the triple nut beasts, but are completely invisible, which makes them that much harder to play against. Each one of these birds are equipped with triple little owls. They are fully geared to take anything out, no matter the shielding. Little Owl has the identical effect as Nutcracker, which is all Little Owl cards of this Axie gain six damage this battle. This means that if you play six Little Owl cards, you would already be at 96 damage per Little Owl. So obviously, the eyes, ears, the mouth will all be Little Owl. Now, this is where the juicy bits come in. The next cards you wanna have are Potato Leaf, Antenna, and pigeon post. So you may be thinking, why the hell would you want potato leaf on a bird? See, the reason is due to the potato leaf's effect. Gain stealth if there is at least one living ally. Stealth makes it so that your Axie is untargetable until it plays a card, which allows you to keep your bird safe and invisible from enemy attacks until you decide to play a card, which is really good for allowing you to set up little bird combos without worrying about your bird getting taken out immediately. Now, you guys should know what Antenna does at this point. I'm not gonna go into too much in detail, but as you can imagine, the scry effect will really help us filter through the unnecessary cards and allow us to ramp up the damage on the little owl cards quickly. Lastly, we have Pigeon Pose, as it was one of the most suitable bird back cards for this build because of the following effect. Add one blackmail to the opponent's hand. Blackmail is a nasty card that has retain, so it's gonna keep going into your opponent's hand, and it forces them to apply taunt to their backmost axie when played. Basically achieving the egg bomb blackmail combo from V2, but in a single card. Oh, I can't imagine if you had to play that thing. Oh, Jesus. As you guys can probably tell, not only are these shinobi birds destructive, but they're also so annoying to deal with as they're always in stealth mode waiting for a chance to attack. They consist of mainly bird parts, then one bug part and one plant part, allowing you to still use a decent number of charms. The best rune to have on the shinobi bird would most likely be Raven's Tactics which reads, deal 20% bonus damage if HP is above 50%, and then take 20% less damage if HP is below 50%, which will allow your birds to do city-destroying damage. So that was all we have in the Bulletproof Aquarium. We should probably go soon before the Aquarium League gets any worse. Mystic, we got a flooding! Get the sponge aquas in here! What? No, sorry. 
That's still in development. No Sponge Aquas here. So that brings us to the end of the tour, gents. We have some very exotic builds in the works at the moment, and they're being bred as we speak. We actually had a bunch of power loss in our facilities due to all the energy they needed to fuel the creation. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour though, and if you guys want to see more content like this, please give us a sub and hit that like button. And if you're a big theory crafter like me, make sure you click that bell or you might end up missing out on the next tour. Alright now, I gotta go back to the lab. I'll see you guys next time, alright?